Welcome to Nirenga, the most unique place in Lithuania. It is situated on a small strip of land with the Baltic Sea on one side and the Koronian Lagoon on the other side. It is the most difficult place to reach in Lithuania. From Vilnius you first need to drive three hours to reach Klaipeda city, then take a ferry and then pay an entry fee to enter the national park. And the trip can get even prolonged more during the summer months because of all the crowds trying to get in and out. Manus the tourists in Neringa municipality is very small, with a population of only 3,903. As I said, Neringa can be reached by a ferry from Klaipeda if you travel by car. But there also are a few more ferry options to get there if you travel on foot or by bike. There are some from Klaipeda that reach the famous resorts Nida and Juatkrante, another from Dreverna Resort in Klaipeda district to Juatkrante, and a ferry from Bentis Ragas Bird Banding Station in Chilote district, which goes straight to Nida. If you really love water travel, then you can reach Nida by boat through the river Namunas from Kaunas, passing by spectacular landscapes with even a few castles on the riverbanks. Of course, all these boats are only available during the summer season. So let's talk about why this place is so famous and most wanted to visit. It is for its Kuronian Spit National Park. Its unique narrow landscape filled with sand dunes, rare animal and plant species, and historical fishing villages are a part of UNESCO World Heritage. It is the most protected area in Lithuania, thus explaining the ecology fee for all the motor transport entry. But the national park is most famous for the sand dunes, of which there are plenty here. Actually, there even is a legend behind it. Once upon a time, there used to be a big sea monster that sunk local fishermen boats, so the villagers didn't have enough food and weren't able to defend from it. But in one of the seaside villages, there lived a giant girl named Neringa, who was very kind and hardworking. When she found out about the sea monster, she got very upset, and she figured out how to help the villagers. She took lots of sand and went into the sea to build a long dike to separate the monster from the villages. The monster wasn't able to attack anymore and happy villagers named the dike after the girl, Neringa. So that's why there are so many sand dunes here. Let me show you a few good places to explore them. In Nida, there is probably the most famous Parnidis dune. From here you can see both the sunrise and the sunset in the water. Also, it is just on the border with the Russian state of Kaliningrad, as this small strip of land is shared with it. So don't wander too far into the dunes. On top of the dune, there is an observational deck with a large sundial in the middle. Parnidis dune can be easily reached by car or by walking through a short cognitive trail from Nida Center. Another amazing place to explore the dunes is at Nagli Nature Reserve. There is a one kilometer long trail leading to dune formations called the Grey Dunes, also known as the Dead Dunes. Throughout the decade, strong wind buried in sand the old Nagli village and forest around it. We can still see some old boats in the sand in some places on the way to the top of the dunes. The trail ends at the very top with a breathtaking views of the nature reserve and the Koronian Lagoon. The grey dunes look impressive with its steep slopes going straight to the water and it is visible even from the other side of the Koronian Lagoon. Now let's go to the famous Nida resort situated on the shore of the lagoon. But don't be alarmed, it is famous but never crowded. Unlike other popular seaside resort Palanga in the north from Klaipeda, Nida doesn't attract large crowds who want to party. People come here to rest and enjoy the pure nature, so it is always quiet here, even if it's fully booked. So Nida is actually a historical fishing village turned to a resort. Beside the famous Parnidis dune, the town has a lot to offer culturally as well. There are lots of museums here, and I will show you some of them. Also, Nida has plenty of the traditional fishermen's houses, painted red and blue. You can visit Fisherman's House Museum, situated in an early 20th century house, to see how we used to live. Another museum is also related to the water, Misgeris Amber Museum. Amber is an important part of Lithuania in history. 
It was used in jewelry for at least 2000 years, as the Baltic tribes traded with the Romans. Misgiris Museum has a beautiful amber collection. Here you can learn not only about amber's beauty and history, but also about its healing and therapeutic properties. Next and probably the most popular museum in the Koronian Spit is the famous German writer Thomas Mann Museum. Here I must first mention that the whole Neringa municipality, together with Klaipeda and other southwest lands, were historically Prussian German Empire lands. Most of history, architecture, names and people are inheritedly of Prussian heritage. So no surprise that many Germans in the 19th century and the beginning of 20th century were coming to need a resort. The dunes landscape became famous amongst the German painters and Nida became a so-called artist colony. One of such visitors was the Nobel Prize winner Thomas Mann, who even built a cottage here in 1929. He spent three summers here, mostly for writing and part of his life's work epic novel Joseph and his brothers was written here. Today his cottage is not only a museum, but also a cultural center where many artist gatherings, concerts and events are held. Furthermore, the museum holds a yearly international Thomas Mann Festival, which consists of a large variety of concerts, literature discussions, exhibitions and movie screenings. So Nidad can definitely be a place for a very cultural holiday too. Thomas Mann House stands on a tall hill and next to it there is a great panoramic view of the Coronian Spit and the Lagoon, which in one conference he called the Italian View. This is one of the spots that attracted a lot of German painters too. Now let's move from one hill in Nida to another. Urbas Hill and on top of it the lighthouse of Nida. This classic red and white 29 meters tall lighthouse is one of the symbols of Nida and it is probably the best spot to have a panoramic view of all the surroundings. The lighthouse is still fully functioning till today, but it allows visitors during the daytime as well. Ok, I cannot delay it any longer. When in Nida, one must go to the beach on the coast of the Baltic Sea. Even though it is quite a walk from the town with around 2 km distance, it doesn't feel too long as the path goes through a pine tree forest filled with fresh air. And the beach is amazing. All the beaches in Neringa are beautiful, neat and the sand is very soft and fine. If you like natural and remote places, then these beaches are perfect for you, as even the most crowded beach near Nida Resort is empty compared with Palanga in the summer season. And this beach just stretches along all the 50 kilometers of the Coronian Spit Coast, without interruption till the end of it near Klaipedan Port, so there is plenty of space to find a quiet spot. On the other hand, there also is a spot on the beach for a more luxurious relaxation. The northern beach of Nida has some nice sunbeds and an elegant beach park, which also has trendy parties in the evenings. Next, let's see another resort, kind of a smaller version of Nida, Juatkrande. The name of it means Black Coast. It is a little bit easier to reach than Nida, as it is way closer to the car ferry, but not too close. Just like Nida, Juatkrande is a historical fishing village and you can see that from all those cute wooden houses. Furthermore, in the second half of the 19th century, Juatkante became a famous resort and plenty of beautiful Prussian-style villas were built here, which give quite a contrast compared with the humble fishermen's houses. Today many of them are hotels, so there is a good opportunity to have a closer look if you would like to stay there. There also are some museums in Juatkante. One such is the Museum and Culture Center of Ludwig Reza a prominent public figure in the region. In addition to the permanent historical exhibition, there also is an art gallery and the center organizes a lot of cultural events. But Juatkrante is mostly famous for something completely different. A unique place indeed, the Hill of Witches. It is thought that witches used to gather and have feasts on top of this hill. Local artists took the idea and created an informative and fun wooden sculpture gallery of witches, devils, various monsters, pagan gods and more. It is a great place for a walk and for a laugh, 
some sculptures have some very interesting designs. At the same time, the visitors can learn about the creatures and local legends. And the last but not least place to visit is one more natural place. Even not the most avid fans of bird watching will find this place interesting. It is the colony of cormorants and grey herons. It is one of the largest colony of these birds in Europe. More than 3,000 cormorants and 200 grey herons come here to breed every year. Cormorants are slowly taking over the nests of grey herons and also because of the acid in their excrements, the trees all around there are dead. This way they create quite a surreal landscape. The best spot to watch these birds is at a bird watching deck just outside Joatkantem. Overall, I think Veneringa is a must place to visit if you want to see Lithuania beyond its larger cities. It might seem like a bold statement, but the Koronian spit is the pride of every nature-loving Lithuanian. Neringa municipality is a great place to visit if you love walking or cycling in the nature, with all the pedestrian and cycle paths available. See you in Neringa. Thanks for watching.